Okay, so with that, let's get into correlation does not imply causation. You've probably heard this many times before, and for machine learning people, this is prediction does not imply causation. So the example here is that, say you are looking at data of people who sleep with their shoes on and wake up with headaches. And it turns out that most people who sleep with their shoes on wake up with headaches. Most people who don't sleep with their shoes on don't wake up with headaches. The two are strongly correlated, strongly associated. You might think, oh, okay, I probably shouldn't sleep with my shoes on because I don't want to wake up with a headache, that it's a, it's a cause. But, you know, what if in your data you also have information that most of the people who were going to sleep with their shoes on were also drinking pretty heavily the night before? And those same people were the ones waking up with a headache. Then you might think, oh, okay, the only reason that we're seeing this association between the two is because there's a common cause, which is drinking the night before. And there's sort of two ways to resolve in your head why shoe sleeping is so strongly correlated with waking up with a headache. And the first is that, you know, consider two groups of people, the ones who went to sleep with their shoes on. So that's the shoe sleepers and the ones who went to sleep without their shoes on, the non-shoe sleepers. These two groups of people differ in a very key way. And that is that almost everyone in the shoe sleeping group drank the night before. Almost everyone in the non-shoe sleeping group did not drink the night before. So the key way is sort of think about the average number of people who drank the night before. It's just a completely different number. And that kind of explains why we can't look at these two groups and deduce some causal effect from them. The groups are not comparable. You would want that the groups to be the same in every way except for the treatment, whether or not they went to sleep with shoes on. The other way is confounding. So because we have this common cause, it confounds the effect of shoe sleeping on waking up with a headache. And graphically, you should visualize it this way. There's this confounding association that is running between shoe sleeping and waking up with a headache. And that's the association that we observe. This is in contrast to causal association, which would be a sort of directed path from shoe sleeping to headache. The association that we observe, the total association, is a mixture of these causal and confounding associations. And correlation is just one type of association. Association here is just a synonym for statistical dependence, and correlation is technically a measure of linear statistical dependence, but people frequently use it to mean statistical dependence in general. Um, but to avoid the confusion, we're just going to use the word association rather than correlation. But yeah, just let that th sink in your minds. If you were to measure correlation, or any measure of association, you would be looking at a mixture of causal and confounding association. And that additional confounding association is why correlation does not imply causation. So many of us have learned that correlation does not imply causation, but that doesn't stop us from using this heuristic all the time. Correlation equals causation is actually a cognitive bias. Okay, so in this example, where shoe sleeping is associated with a headache, you could actually just replace shoe sleeping with star, just with anything, say. So just anything associated with your headache. And this star could come from a variety of different places. One is the availability heuristic, which is another cognitive bias. And what does the availability heuristic say? It roughly says, what will come into your mind? what star will come into your mind is just whatever is most readily available in your mind. So for example, if you recently read, say yesterday, that caffeine is associated with headaches, then you might think, oh, it's because I drank a cup of coffee earlier today. That's why I have a headache. Even if, say, 
two years ago, you read an article saying caffeine is not associated with headaches. That's just not nearly as available in your mind. So say you want to explain why you have a headache. You know, you have a headache and you're saying, why do I have this headache? How can I not have a headache in the future? The way we might do this is come up with some star via the availability heuristic or motivated reasoning, which I'll talk about briefly. And given that that star is associated with our headache, we'll say, okay, that explains the headache using the correlation equals causation cognitive bias. And motivated reasoning here is that we have some worldview that we want to come up with reasoning to justify our worldview. So an example of motivated reasoning in this case is say that I don't enjoy spending time with my in-laws. I might be motivated to attribute my headache to the time that I spent with my in-laws earlier that day. I might say, okay, I got a headache because I spent time with my in-laws earlier today, so I probably shouldn't hang out with my in-laws in the future. It gives me a reason to not do what I don't want to do, say. Okay, so that's motivated reasoning. As a, as a recap, we use correlation equals causation as a cognitive bias all the time. For example, say we want to explain something and we notice something else is associated with it, then we use correlation equals causation. Here is a real data example where we have the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool and the number of films that Nicolas Cage appeared in. And it looks like these two quantities are pretty well associated over time. So does that mean that Nicolas Cage drove people to drown themselves? Or does it mean that Nicolas Cage found out that people were drowning themselves and then he tried to make movies to convince people not to drown themselves? Or is it neither of those, right? So it's, you know, it's probably that these two are correlated just by chance and that, um, and that one isn't really the cause of the other.